Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cross Paths Revisited. My name is Bob Poniatowski, and for some 25 years, Charlie Berluti and I brought you all the news and views and people in Newport County on a program called Cross Paths. It actually totaled 600 different programs. So we thought it might be fun to revisit them. And so join Charlie and me as we walked down the railroad tracks for another version of Cross Paths. Hi everyone, my name is Charlie Baluti and welcome to the program Cross Pass. Today we have with us Mira Bockley Tatelli. And uh, she's going to be doing a little bit of talking. We're going to be talking about her books and also she's going to fix us at, towards the end of the show a nice dessert. Welcome to the show. Oh, Muriel. thank you, Charlie. So good to be back. It's like coming home. It is, isn't it? <laughs> this is home away from home. <laughs> yeah. We've done quite a few shows together. I know we have. And you know, uh, I'm amazed. Uh, seems like every time I've talked to you, you write a book. So maybe there's another book in the future. I don't Well, this one just came out, so. Yeah, so it'd be a while yet. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, each book, um, you know, it, uh, by the time you do all the artwork, I do all the paintings and the writings, and then I go to my graphic artists. Uh, mm -hmm. They do, you know, they would do the book together, mm -hmm. the color schemes, and, yeah. and she makes it so interesting, too. I bet. For people that don't know, I don't imagine there are a lot of people that don't know uh, about your books, but for people that don't know, let's... Let's talk about the subject. Now, the subject, of course, that you wrote was about a cat, right? Called yep. Puma. And you started off with this beautiful book, and it's called Where's Puma? Yes. And I'm going to hold this book up to the camera itself and tell us a little bit about uh, how you came up with this idea and how you worked on this. Well, originally I had done my two cookbooks, so I had I was kind of uh, uh, into doing books. Uh, uh -huh. But my children, I have six: Michael, Paul, Georgia, Wanda, Eric, and Katie. Uh -huh. And they uh, suggested that maybe I should try a children's book. She, and why don't we write about our family cat? Uh -huh. So that's Puma, and Puma's nine years old. And so I thought, how am I ever going to do that? I mean, buildings were what I did, and now I have to do a cat and do something different. So that's how I came upon the first book. And, and tell, us, tell us a little bit th about that first book. What, what happens to Puma? What happens? Yeah. How did you come up with the idea and what happens? And well, uh, I came up with, I started to paint, and my grandchildren that come to my house, uh, Every, they come to see the cat. Every time they come in to visit, they say, oh, where's Puma? Uh -huh. So it was a, such an a, 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 a interesting title. Then I thought, well, that's what I'm going to call it. And um, I painted little parts of our house, the backyard. I painted uh, uh, different parts of the bedroom where they're always looking for her. It's always, where's Puma? Yeah, this it's was not rocket science book, <laughs> trust me, but it's, uh, it was painted and written with love. Uh -huh. And I dedicated it to my, uh, to my grandchildren. Oh, that is so wonderful. And speaking uh, about that, let's, uh, let's just give the people an idea of... Uh, yeah. And we're going to show this one up in the trees chasing squirrels. 
Uh, so I'm going to show this to the camera, and uh, <laughs> that's part of my backyard. People will get an idea. There it is, right there. And uh, where's Puma? He's up there in the tree, right? He's yeah. Puma's up in the tree. Yeah. Yep. And you did the artwork yourself. I do. I you? do everything. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a that's a yep. wonderful. And I self-publish. I don't have a publisher. That's a wonderful rendition. Yeah. You know. So after that. Well, after that, I thought, well, that's it. But the book did well, so uh, my children uh, said, oh, come on, you can do another one. Uh -huh. So they egged me on all the time. <laughs> and of course, you know, I'm getting older now, and I'm thinking, I'm a, uh, what am I going to do? I, uh, you know, I had never started painting until I was 68 years old. Really? I never painted, no. I, wow. took, I took my art lessons from Katie Hoyt and Nancy Goucher Thomas, and overall there were maybe 10 lessons. Did you always want to paint, though, when you were a young girl? I always, I always, um, I used to own a French nursery school, and so I, I, I did a lot of creative art with the children. Um, I, uh, but not something like this. Not to sit down and have have something in my mind. And what I thought I would do is um, uh, do something for Newport. So I, I thought, well, I'm going to, I'm going to paint Newport, and the cat will go and get lost in our town. And this was your second That's book. That's the second book. Uh, I'm going to show this up there. Puma. Puma Lost in Newport. Newport. And she, we did uh, lose her for about three days. Of course, I don't know where she went, but I made this up. Uh -huh. So <laughs> I thought I'm going to pick out some interesting focal points of our town. Uh -huh. And uh, and it worked. Uh, it worked. Uh, it, it, uh, people like it. And it was, it, it's a great, uh, great venture. Oh, wow. And you, put, you brought some uh, interesting uh, spots there, too, uh, yeah, I put the, in Newport. Yeah, I put the synagogue in there. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I put uh, Truro Park in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you also put the Newport, uh, City Hall in Newport. I did, yeah. And uh, let, let's, uh, let's show the people uh, some of your artwork there that yep. uh, you did. Yeah, I went to the City Hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, there it is right there. Went to the city hall. And did, uh, did you, you eventually got to find Puma though, didn't you? Yes, oh yes, uh, the police found her. If you look at the back of the book, there's a police station uh, that I painted and uh, she's in the, in the police car. No fooling. Yes, yeah. that's the end of the story where the police are going to find her. I uh, I know she ended. Is this the one that um, my nephew ended up in? Was he in this book? He stopped at uh, the radio station WADK. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and he stopped in to see Art Baluti, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of people in that book. It's just Newport. Wow, isn't that neat? And I just I just felt that. Uh, I had to do something for for Newport, so, and for my cat, and and th that was wonderful. You, I think, in here also, uh, I think you put in the old stone mill. Did you? I did. Yeah. Truro Park is a famous park. Nobody knows who built that in the 1700s. So, I don't either. But I thought it would be a nice painting to do, uh, in in the book and. I've I've sold a lot of the uh, the the pictures in in there. People that love the pictures, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. They they were saying that one time they thought the uh, man that uh, uh, started McDonald's uh, might have built that, the old snow mill. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said nobody seems to know, so oh, couldn't so that we be? We can a, make it up. Couldn't that be a possibility? We can make up all the stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, and speaking about that, you did such wonderful artwork in these books. I got to tell you. Oh, thank you. I, I, you know, I can't figure out uh, why, um, why I, I paint, can paint. Uh, I don't know what it is. I. All I know is when I sit at home and I paint a lot, not just f uh, for my books, but some nights I feel like I want to do something and uh -huh. I'll sit and, and paint and it, it's uh, hours go by, you don't even feel it. No, no fool. And they tell me, um, I don't know, somebody once told me that, uh, I don't know if it's a secret or not, but uh, you, you paint on an ironing board. I what? You paint on an ironing board? I do. <laughs> 
I know. <laughs> Bill Hyde came to my house because he puts me in his new book and he thinks he comes to my house and he said, Mira, where's your studio? And I said, oh, it's in my living room. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. Where do you paint? I said, on my ironing board. <laughs> I do everything on my ironing board. So you don't have to have a fancy place. Yeah. Nobody has to have anything fancy. No. And it doesn't no. have to be expensive. You just have no. to paint with your heart. No, I, I, I haven't been to your place and I haven't seen your ironing board, but I have seen Bill Heights. But it is a true story. Yeah. <laughs> and he has... Uh, oh, he has a wonderful studio. He has a great studio. Oh, to dream yeah. about. Yeah, you oh. would love to have something oh, like that. Oh, I've been there. You'd love to He's have something. He's such a dear. <laughs> yeah. Now, the uh, next one, you, you went ahead and you figured after you did this second book. I know, I can't believe I, uh, but you know, the Preservation Society has been so good to me. And I thought I'm gonna do one of the mansions. And I've always liked uh, the elms. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they gave me permission to go I'm in. show this uh, to book go up in there. And, and paint and look at the picture, uh, you know, the, the scenery, the window treatment. So that's how I did the elms. Oh, that's great. and. Uh, you did a great job with it, and the Elms has so much history behind it, too. It does. It does. Yeah. And I did the backyard. I painted, uh, you know, the beautiful water fountain where Puma's in the backyard. And it said, this uh, this fountain is grand, my dear little pet. It squirts water, so don't get wet. It's oh. where all the bluebirds come for a drink. It's their private bird bath. Well, that's what they think. <laughs> so it's mostly all in poem, this wow. book. Do you do all the writing for it too, or do you I help? I do all the writing for for the book of the poetry. I, I did all the the writing, and then I had help uh, uh, doing it poetry wise. Um, but I write all the books. I do. Yes, uh -huh. I write them and I self publish. Wow! And you do all. And I pay. <laughs> <laughs> you you paint too, so that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, along the way. That you thought uh, now, if your grandchildren, did they have a lot to do with you doing this last book? Uh, Puma goes to the uh, well. It's not so much walk. that they had a lot to do with it because I did the book over a year of a period of year, huh? and um, but I thought what I want to do special is I wanted to dedicate this book to uh, my all my grandchildren and the cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So that's what I did with this book. And I thought the cliff walk is so popular and everybody loves it there. And I think when the children go for a walk on the cliff walk, it'll be nice to, you know, for them to take their books and, and, and see all the wonderful uh, history of the cliff walk. And there's, uh, there's Puma right now at the entrance of the cliff walk. We could show that. And this is from... Uh, Muriel's latest book. I put it up like that. There we are. This is from Muriel's and see the last book. page. Uh, show you, can I show you the last page? Sure, where I you can. Uh, uh, to the uh, grandchildren. Yeah. Uh, where is that located? There. Oh, right here. <laughs> and here is the last page. It uh, is called at Puma. I painted. Uh, this is a picture I took of Puma, and Puma's then I, caught, I yeah. painted a chair around Puma. I painted it and did the wallpaper, uh -huh. and then I dedicated it and took pictures of the seven grandchildren. Oh wow, that's neat. I can see them up there now. So, and. We have Erica, Alex, and uh, we have Leela and Bridget, and uh, we have uh, Alyssa and Caleb, and the youngest one is uh, our, our new new addition, and that's Sydney. Oh, nice. So I'm blessed. You are. You are, and, and you got Puma right in the middle as the Puma's star. Puma's nine years old. Wow. Now, Puma lives with Bridget. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I know one time, uh, it was a while back, we... We were uh, fortunate enough to have uh, Puma on the show with us, with your grandchildren. Oh, wasn't that fun? Oh, I remember that. They all, yeah, they, they came and they held uh, Puma. She was very good. But Puma's getting on now. She's nine, but she's got wow. some good years ahead of her. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Muriel. What's, what's in the future now? Do you, uh, is this going to be your last book, or do you think there's another book coming? Or are you going to stick strictly with painting, or 
Uh, what's I, 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 I paint a lot. I, I do a lot of things for people. Um, uh, I've often thought that uh, I would like to uh, uh, write my story. Oh, that be my life story. Yeah, because it was it's uh, it's kind of interesting. It's not what you would think it is, and uh, once everyone reads my story, they'll realize that uh, anything you want to do in this life, you can do, uh -huh. no matter what adversities that you have in your lifetime, you can do anything you want. I'm seventy five, and uh, you know I hope I have m more years ahead. Uh -huh. And whatever I'm going to do, uh, you know, I'll do it with love and from my heart. Wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. And uh, we do hope that you have many more years, uh, productive years, and I'm sure you will. I know. There's probably a, a thousand more paintings. Every day, <laughs> every sure. day is a bonus. Y you bet. And with that, uh, I've got to tell you that uh, Muriel, we're going to be right back, and uh, stay right with us, folks, because Muriel's going to be uh, cooking us some great food. Hi, we're back, and uh, if you saw our first segment, we had a beautiful segment on uh, Muriel Buckley de Tully's books. Now, this segment, Muriel is going to cook us uh, a special recipe in crepes, I believe. Right, Muriel? Yes. Um, well, uh, what I wanted to do is uh, talk about crepes because they're so popular and uh, they've been around for years. But I had an idea, which I do because I'm busy, and for people that are working, you take a day that's a crepe day and you do maybe a double batch of crepes. And then what you can do is you can layer your crepes with, uh, I have it here, this one package here was a cinnamon crepe and I labeled it cinnamon. But you can put dill in your crepe, you can put tarragon, you can put all kinds of different spices, depending upon what you're gonna put in your crepe. Now, this Are you is- Are gonna, you gonna make this a sweet one today? Or? This I'm making sweet and I put cinnamon and sugar Ooh. in the crepe. And um, so this is how I do it and anyone can do it. What I do is I, I, I cook the crepes and cool it and then I layer them with, uh, this is just parchment paper or wax paper. And uh, this is what the crepe looks like. You can make them larger, smaller, but uh, I chose to make a smaller one because uh, I have a small plate today. <laughs> anyway, but it is interesting because the crepes um, are so easy and the recipe is even easier. All you do is, what you do is take your pencil and I'm going to tell you uh, what, how to uh, make this crepe. What you're going to do is take your bowl and take a whisk or put it in a blender. You take one cup of flour, a little pinch of salt, you take two eggs, and then you take one and a quarter cups of milk. Now what you do is you take two tablespoons of butter and melt it. After it's melted, cool it a little bit, then put it in the uh, ingredients. You stir that up and real, real well. Then you take your crepe pan. This is my crepe pan. doesn't have to be that wide. They have different sizes. But um, what you do is when you put your uh, crepe batter in the pan, you should make sure that it's the right temperature. It should be quite high. And a lot of times you can figure out by putting a drop of water. And if it just spurts up it's usually the right temperature. So what you do, you take your batter, of course we have a kitchenless kitchen, so I'm doing my best to show you and to have fun with it. So what you do is you take uh, the batter, eh, take a good, uh, maybe a good huge tablespoon and put it in your pan and then you rotate the pan till you get a circular and get it thin, it doesn't want to be thick, and then put it back on there and it's going to cook fairly quickly and as and as what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take the crepe that I made which is uh, it's made with cinnamon and sugar and it's not usually the way I would do it I would love to come here and demonstrate the whole thing but this is fine so I'm going to make sure this is hot and what I'm going to do today is do the crepe uh, with ice cream hot chocolate and whipping cream now, I like to do the real whipping cream. 
I mean, when real, you do whipping the whipping cream, cream you put good. the whole uh, cream with uh, the heavy cream and you put powdered sugar, not, not the granulated sugar. It makes it a much better whipping cream. But today I chose to do this, which is not usually what I would do. So Charlie, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. heating up uh, the crepe. Okay. And uh, I'm going to lower the higher. The, we want the crepe to be a little crispy on the oh, edge. Oh yeah, I like crispy, uh, <coughs> I like crispy crepes. And you know, when, when you do your crepes, you can do a, a double batch. So I gave you, uh, the amount that you have from what I just gave you, you would make 12 uh, uh, crepes. But you can do a double batch and do what I say, Take your crepes, do like six in each package, like this. And you can put your cinnamon crepe, and the next one you can do tarragon crepe. And a lot of times uh, you can take a, a nice cream sauce that are easy to make. You can put chicken in there or fresh broccoli, wrap it in your crepe, and it is so delicious. If you're doing chicken, you know, with a cream sauce, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. do the tarragon. It would oh, be a very yeah, complimentary. Yeah, that, that would be a great one. If you want to do a fresh spinach crepe in a, in a wonderful cream sauce, you can do that uh, and do dill. Um, it just, just whatever that, that, that you like. I see. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how uh, this, is, this is going to work. We take the crepe. Is it's it getting that, hot yet? Oh, yeah. It's, it's almost there. I'm gonna take that. We're gonna take the this. I brought my Ooh, ice cream. Boy, ice cream too. Yeah. Oh. And my scooper. And it's probably not going to be uh, perfect. Uh, and but we're going to put it this way. And what I'm going to do is take the ice cream. It doesn't matter what type of ice cream you have. Any no. kind that you like. That that. What do you like? Do you like vanilla ice cream, Charlie? Yes. Vanilla is good. Oh, good. Vanilla is good. Yeah. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to roll the crepe like this, turn it over like this, here, mm -hmm. and then we take the chocolate sauce, which I've been heating up, and we're going to put it Ooh, right over. Wow. Oh, you're going to love this, mm -hmm. let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Now, we're oh, going to touch God. it off with whipping cream. Oh. And if I, I should have brought a cherry, would really finish it off. Oh, that's nice. That's an excellent, looks like an excellent dessert, doesn't it? Oh, you're going to love it. Mm. And there's no calories, by the way. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, whenever we do desserts, why worry about calories? Mm -hmm. Just enjoy it, right? This is my favorite part. Can I taste this now? Hmm? How, I do, I, how do I... Uh... Oh, just dig in there. Mmm. Excellent. Mmm. This is really good. You enjoying it? Mm. Well, I have this crepes really for good. all the all the wonderful people that have uh, been able to help us today. Oh, that is that Marie is great. Marie Perini, she's yes. so great to come here and help me out. Uh, they, uh, we and have... she brought her grandchildren today. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, and yeah, and Ida. So they're having fun. This is their first experience here. Oh, so they're, they're having a good time and. So these, you know, the, uh, getting back to the crepes, uh, these are um, wrapped in foil and you label them, put them in your freezer so you have uh, the different stacks of six or you can do more if you want and pull them out uh, maybe an hour before you have your, your meal um, you know, pull, so they, they thaw. Then make whatever you're going to put in the crepe. If it's going to be a dinner, uh, oh, there's so many wonderful recipes with a, a, a delicious cream sauce. Uh, you can flavor the, the, the cheese sauce with a chicken, a fresh broccoli, all the wonderful vegetables oh, uh, wow. that you can put into a, a crepe. And uh, the dessert is uh, is also wonderful. This is a, this is probably a, be a wonderful thing. Like if you have. Uh, last minute company coming or yes. you know and you can just dig into the freezer if you had these pre-made like you said and just bring them out warm them up and do what you that's do. what i'm saying is uh you know so many people work today and uh the last minute thing they might have uh, you know four or five people come over for a quick meal and just pull the crepes out make a cream sauce and you know it's 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 so easy mm -hmm. everything in life can be much easier if you think about it oh you're right you know, let me ask you this, uh, to get back to what you were doing before, are you doing any other paintings or? Yeah, I, um, I've been doing uh, a lot of um, 
uh, cards that I do for, for my family and thank you cards uh, from pictures that I paint. Oh, and I, I, I size them down and I do my own cards. And uh, that's been fun this winter. And I've been doing people's houses. I've been doing that, uh, painting their houses. Oh. I always keep busy, and I knit. I'm a knitter. Oh, you are? Oh, yes. I, I, I saw a program the other night. I was surprised to find out. Now they've got, uh, they have men's club. That, that are knitters. That are knitters. Uh, I never knew that. It was on, I believe, on a Today Show. Yeah. Yesterday, that men are getting out there and starting to knit. So uh, it's, a, it's a whole new ball game out there. Yeah, and uh, so. the thing about knitting is that uh, um, it's uh, they have a book out about uh, the the history of knitting, which started in World War One when men, when people were knitting for the the men that were out uh, you know to war and, um, uh, and men that didn't go were sitting in parks in the summertime in knitting. I have it's a wonderful book, it, it all is. about the history of knitting. And I wondered too. Uh, well, I, I think back to those times, and those are the times, if you recall, when men started to knit. One sleeve was always longer, maybe six inches on a sweater, than the other one. Why? So you come out, well, I guess they didn't get get it down that, that <laughs> good, you know, so <laughs> you'd see a lot of short arm, right arms, yes, and a lot of long six inch arms. So I guess they get carried away. Well, you're a knitter, you know, you'd start knitting there and somebody starts talking to you. Before you know it, you have a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was—I've been a knitter all my life. I uh -huh. mean, since I was a little girl, so I knit a what, lot. What is your favorite thing to knit? My favorite thing to is it a sweater? Or, uh, uh, I like to make scarves, uh, uh, scarves different, and I—I I love sweaters. Mm -hmm. I've knit for my grandchildren over the years. It's—it's a, it's a very relaxing hobby. And you know, uh, the thing that you—I uh, I, missed—that you always used to bring on is that wrap. What was it called? Uh, oh, yeah, the the wool wrap. Yeah, yeah, I have one today. Do you make them? I'm yeah, I, oh. I have one today, but it's not the uh, the wide wide one. But I may, I have one that I've made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that used to be your favorite trademark. Yeah. Oh, my boas. My, my your boas. That's oh, that's what you're thinking yeah, of. Yeah, the boas. Oh, yeah. Well, the next time, if there's the next time, I'll be sure to bring my boa. For the, the kids always love it. I do a lot of motivational speaking in schools. Wonderful. This winter, yeah. uh, I, I go to schools and talk to children uh -huh. and tell them, you know, Wonderful. start painting. Well, Muriel, that's great. We've got to end up because we're running out of time. So I want to thank you for coming on the oh, show. Oh, Charlie, thank you. Preparing this for us, showing us your books. It's really wonderful. Thank you for having me, Charlie. I'd like to thank a couple of other people here today. I'd like to thank Roger Glenn Miller. Ruth Carter, Bob Poniatowski, Brian Medeiros, and the uh, person who handled sound for us today, Marie Purini. So from all of us at Cross Paths, this is Charlie Baluti saying good night, God bless, and take care of yourselves. Well, thanks again for joining us with Cross Paths Revisited. If you happen to remember fondly some programs that we aired and you'd like to see them again, why you contact us here at the studio. I'm Bob Panitowski. See you on the tracks.